I will just assume that my patrons and people on YouTube are actually waiting for the new how to tutorial. Today we are going to do a progressive house track like Stan Collab and he mainly released in Outer Limit so it will be very similar to those ones that you will also find in Outer Limit uh, label. We will start from the beginning, we will make the drums, we will make the bass and the lead sound and percussions and the hi-hats, we will all go through all of these. I will mainly use the Ableton Live plugins and pigments as a main synth but you can basically follow all the steps that I am doing here in any DAW that you have. So let's sit down, start Ableton and make some progressive house track which is very fitting in this rainy Sunday. <laughs> As usual we are going to start with a kick drum and I'm just gonna go for kind of like a progressive kick I think I should have something like a fatty progressive kick or something yeah I think this should do let's put it in play this and see how it sounds maybe loop this as well and the main reason that I like this kick for this type of progressive house track is like it has a nice little thumb here so that you can hear it and then you have you have a really kind of limited or like a quite sustained tail on top of that so oftentimes it works nicely and you can come back and cut this tail put a bit fade out and it will still work so it's easy to work around I will say and the second thing that we are going to do is a base so for that I'm gonna get a pigments this will be a bit subby bass, a bit moogish bass. We will still hear the like the growling part of the bass, but it won't be so aggressive. So let's go to an E preset. And to make that sound, I will say the easiest way to just utilizing two different soft tooths. But before that, maybe we can just draw something here. But we should probably use 8 bar loop for this. So let me do like this and move it around and do something like this let's unfold this um, i'm thinking of using kind of f minor here and i want to just go down like then like going down and i want to have the final note to s so if you go check it out here so if i do this here and if in the and if we stay in the f minor scale so g sharp and i will probably do a sharp and we can start with the c if you counted one two three four five so the fifth to first so basically kind of a stable note to unstable and stable so it will kind of roll down if we play now this is of course too high let's put it down like this right and then we can actually utilize maybe a matrix filter so it's a bit more darker great and then let's go to second oscillator and let's pick another wavetable let's go a bit different with this one to make the sound a bit maybe a bit more genuine so i will use this kind of a bit smoother sound to it. tune it down so you can immediately get this kind of a moogish really growling synth sound and what i like to do on top of that is a bit distortion because i really enjoy adding this distortion and pigments to the bass sounds Here we go. I sorry, we have to put it down a bit. And of course, we need a side chain, and I will probably a bit search trader, a bit EQ on top of cut a bit super lows. And I'm thinking a bit using a glue compressor as well because we are playing different notes. Just try to keep the levels a bit same. A simple glue would help. And look ahead should be also important here so that we start ducking the bass before the kick hits and we already have a nice low uh, and again depending on how we feel later on the track we can come back and mix a little bit more but the other thing that I often hear in this track is kind of this nice tom sounds and I think we should do that as well for this track. And if I put a drum rack, I'm not gonna go super crazy with this one, I'm gonna just utilize like a simple uh, 808, 808. <laughs> simple 808 tom, so let's search on what we have, if we have kind of a low 808 or something, yeah. 
I think this is good more than enough. So if we put this here, and then the question is how we are going to do it. I don't want to make it super complicated here. Let's create something around one bar. And what I'm thinking now is actually copy, copy this, copy this. And I will definitely put an EQ just to check out the notes. So let's see where it hits. The easiest way to do the I will take a look at the tunes. Uh, if you click here a couple of times, it's somewhere around here. So it's G sharp. If I can transpose it like this, I want to start with the high pitch tom. So, and here now we are on the F. So we are doing F minor and keeping the tom in the F is cool. I think it needs a bit more detune here to just match exactly. Yeah right there again it's like a, it's probably not just perfect but it's enough for now and now we have the bass we can actually tune this down 12 uh, semitones so we were in the minus 9 plus 9 minus 12 will be something like this and then we can pick something probably like this or minus 4 so basically, if we take a look at the notes again, this was F, right? And then if we click this one, we have another F. And if we click this one, we have C. So we have the the bass note, the root note, and an, an octave below, and then the fifth or the seven semitones in between. So this is the safe bet, let's say. It will work like without an issue, but you can definitely kind of experiment with different notes try to stay in the key because the toms are kind of very melodic oftentimes at least eight or eights are very melodic you can actually hear the root key oftentimes so um, try to stay in the key because of that so if we close this up now and i'm thinking to have something super simple i'm not gonna go super crazy with this so if i come back here and let's just loop it here and let's put some It's probably too occupied, we can maybe take off some later, but for me, if we do it this way, it at least gives me an idea that how it sounds, that I can shape the sounds a bit depending on how I feel, like so. Just to make it th make the things easier for me, let's say. And if we move it up, what I'm going to do, play it around. The, mo the most important thing with 808 toms are like, they have a bit too long tails. You oftentimes need to cut them off so that it doesn't take up too much space. You can see like we don't really feel like we are losing anything. And let's cut off super lows here. Let's put a glue compressor on top. And I will go back to the group processing just to take a look around a bit. I think something like this works again we can come back later on and take a look at what we have to do and see if it is good enough the second thing that i often like to do is like just put the hi-hats and the high end right after the kick if i go start with the kick 
simply because to balance the overall uh, uh, mix so that I don't really overdo things with the other elements. For example, if I don't have the hats there, then I will try to cover that area with my lid, maybe opening it up too much because it feels too empty in the high end. So let's put some things on the high end to balance the things a little bit. The first thing that I want to do actually for this track, I hear that it, he has a lot of shakers sound and for this one i will just use a simple shaker loop that i used in my earlier videos i will put like a link here so that you can take a look how that part is done so let me quickly maybe search for a shaker loop i don't know what it comes it doesn't really matter I think this one is a bit more like a high head ish so I like this one a bit more. This, and the problem is it's a bit too much volume. Let's put that down a little bit. Let's make it a bit more organic by introducing vocoder. I don't want to overdo this too much. Let's see. just it adds this kind of uh, organic feel in that and the final is probably EK8. This is really cool. Again, we should definitely send some um, reverbs and delays. Uh, I think I have a room here. We can maybe try with this one. It's really subtle. The problem is this one is this. Just giving a slight ambience to the track and that will be fine the other thing is like he has out of this kind of organic or almost like a um, humanized hats as well so we should do that too and we should start with that probably to do that i will just pick up a like a simple sample and try to play around with the things and to come up with an idea so so let's just search for i don't know an open hat probably This is a bit too long probably, but we can cut it. Uh, let me see what we can do. And let's put something like this. I want something like if that makes sense. So the one thing that I like to do probably here is if we convert this one, I will have a bit more control over the, uh, the overall envelope. So let me put something like this right i'm thinking like ding 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 kind of feel this but the issue as you can see it's too, too long and we're gonna deal with here so if we go let's solo this It could be a bit hard to hear at the moment. Something like this. But I want to also make it a bit more stereo, of course. Let's cut a bit more here, to be honest. Make it brighter. And together again. Maybe volume up a little bit. Here we go. Uh, again, I want the uh, stereo sound. What I'm gonna do, put this guy here and put it down so that we can make a house effect. You can go f like full, like then it will be complete the stereo, but I want the effect to be a bit subtle. I think this is more than enough. We can exaggerate it with the ping pong. If I saw this, you will hear a bit better. It's not super obvious, but it's still a 
there I feel like and then we can go a bit more here and take a look at the other effects. I feel like we can a bit distort the sound if I use an overdrive here and put it there. Let's put it before the EQ. Maybe do not distort it this much but increase the tone. Increase this and... Again, if you play together, let's loop this. Yeah, it's looped already. It is not much, but it always adds this kind of more humanized feel to the track, and I think it's important if you are going for this type of tracks. And the, um, depending on what type of vibes you, that you are going, you can even just utilize the organic hats and just cut the pieces and try to make it more harmonic. And the other thing you can definitely see here is like if you take this off and then if you play with the velocity like it will also even make it a bit more human and you can definitely move around a little bit to make it even more human or you can just use the group pool. And it's more like a human like and I think it had it adds a lot and uh, I hear that trick in his tracks as well so that's why I wanted to tap into that and finally of course we would like to have kind of a bit stronger uh, open hats or closed hat together to make it a bit more vibey and to do that I will actually maybe compound two different hats to make it a bit more richer so what we can do let me see if I can have a richer hat here we go, and then let's go for a closed hat. I think this should be fine. I just want to have this like short piece of it. And let's go here, what I would like to do. Actually, let make it, let's make it shorter because I want to play with the distortion later on. And which means that I can be a bit less careful with the velocity here because I will play other things later on, almost having the same effect. And if we play this now, The reason being is like one is a bit stronger, a bit more like a pump, and the other one is a bit less. The reason being is that open the hi hat adding up, but it's too long. Let's cut this a bit. Hear how actually that manual humanized hats adds up with this open the hat. It's like ding ding ding, ding kind of. However, it's a bit too much. Let's cut this off a little bit here, a bit there, and open this up. The other thing that I like to do here, actually, kind of using overdrive, but using it a bit more creatively, not simply adding the, let's say, distortion, but using it with the LFO so that we can move around the distortion and have a bit different effect each time let's say hi-hat hits uh, in this case if we start playing solo this and play around a bit and then I can take this map this and we can put it to for example the hit this guy My LFO is not working for some reason, uh, but I can try to check it later on again. I have no idea. Probably I have to restart Ableton and so on. And sometimes the this LFO thing is in Ableton actually quite buggy and uh, it always crashes for some reasons. But anyway, so you get the idea. If you take this LFO and map it here, then this LFO will be moving around. So if I do the effects manually, it sounds like this. Let's go, for example, here and then go here. I don't know. I'm randomly doing the idea is actually kind of doing it randomly like this, right? And if we just duplicate it and it will be like this then. I think it's quite good as well like this. Again, the easiest way is just doing with LFO if your LFO works. But in this case, it didn't, so I had to do it manually. And finally, because I'm moving things around a little bit, I'm gonna use an EQ 8, and then I'm gonna also use another glue compressor 
to just glue everything together because it can be a bit volume difference while we are moving around let's uh, do it this way just to make sure let's go back make it fast let's play together with the track Let's send everything to the, the room again. Again, depending on the vibe that you are going for, you can make a bit more like organic or a bit more like this digital, but I think I like it this way. And it works quite nice. The other important sound in this track was kind of, uh, the I heard that this really horn sound or like a brass sound that was quite unique it's analog sounding as well uh, so let's call this like uh, I don't know maybe horn or brass doesn't really matter and put a pigments what I would like to do probably put the notes so that we have them on place it's quite repeating um, sound as well so it shouldn't be that hard uh, let me quickly put the notes uh, try to okay. we have these notes if I play it you can hear a bit more and it, this sounds supposed to be a bit really not a bit really quite brassy i will say let's put my lead sound color here that pinkish thing and what i'm going to do and i'm going to go for the synthesizers and there's that uh, m2 mb2 shape here which i really like like i mentioned a couple of times like this smooth soft to sounds really analog to my ears and what i'm going to do maybe we can pick something like a mini filter here the first thing that i want to do actually put the lfo into the uh, sorry uh, maybe her so we can move it around a little bit slowly and then free running so it will always move and then put it into the wave here so that it can move around a little bit like this maybe too much let's decrease it i want to have the slight movement here we go and then what i'm going to do is uh, just create the envelope so that we have this horn sound so if we go back to the envelopes for example here A little bit release will really help. The, the sound needs a bit like a, let's say, a body in it, so I'm going to utilize a bit more of drive. And a bit the overdrive. It's really quite a nice sound, I will say. Uh, again, depending on the taste, you can open up the envelopes a bit. <laughs> Of course, the thing that is missing is uh, making it a bit more ambient, so we have to add a bit of reverb and delays. And maybe we can also a bit chorus and try if it sounds better in between those guys here. And then we can cut a bit the lows. I 
I think it's quite a nice base. This one actually comes probably like after we will have to go to a break and then this comes in. Uh, and for the break, I also like to have kind of a string sound. I think Pigment has like a nice preset for that one. So we can just basically utilize that. Let me quickly find that. The name of the preset is just Nebula. It's uh, our three, uh, original preset. I will explain. Uh, it's a bit. It takes a bit longer to make that preset, so that's why I just copied it because this video is already becoming extremely long, because I really going into the each detail. So let me do like this. What I would like to do, I would like to have a similar chord progression like that we had in the bass. So if we play it with this thing, sounds like this. We can maybe open this up here. The problem here is these notes are a bit too low if we up them. What I like to do to keep these guys, and let's start like this. And then it's probably one of the easiest way to make chord progressions. We are just following the bass, but I'm just utilizing notes that are inside the chord progression, so it becomes minor, major, and this one's a bit weird by version, but I really feel like it sounds nice there. So if I play with the horns and the bass together, they will create this kind of really nice ambience. It's really, really beautiful, honestly, it just works. And the main reason is like everything is in the same key and everything is following the same chord progression. And it has this kind of nice coherence in it and it really makes the track. And the other thing, because we are thinking now about a, a bit with the, uh, let's say the break, adding a pigments, another one. So I want a bit kind of tension pad like goes all the way. So let's say string kind of sound. One easiest way to do it is actually if you put a knee preset and if you go for like this and then make it out of voices and do it in a little bit and open up the filter all the way up. What we are going to do, I'm going to take this off, but I just want the single note, F, the key, the root note. And it's going to play like this and we're going to tune this up. I saw this. So it should be almost irritating to ears to listen to like this and what we are going to do put the volume down all the way so it's kind of irritating sound but in the meantime it won't be that irritating it will be creating the tension the, there are a couple of things the way a couple of ways to do that so we are going to go for the second notes later let's pick something here that we can go for you can also actually go for a sample here to be honest you don't need to go for full synthesizers for example he they have this both strings you can go for, I don't know, anything really, doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if you take this, I will go for probably granular, just like that. And then, like that, and then we can go for unison. <laughs> and then together. And then we go for effects, and then we'll put, a, let's say, a bit distortion and a bit reverb, here we go. Again, we are interested on really high area here, just like that. You should barely hear it, but it should be there. Like if I play the track with it now, this thing about this one will be a bit more like a break. So if I play it, really creates this nice ambience. So now we can say that we have kind of a cool groove going on and then we have this kind of nice break idea going on. All The only thing that we need is probably adding some clap sound and a bit transition and maybe kind of a smooth, uh, let's say, Tommy plug sound to support the main ambience. So let me put 
everything on top of each other because this part will be the video is already I don't know how many minutes so it's becoming really really long it's easier to just put everything on now and explain from there because otherwise it will be a bit boring so let me quickly do that and come back okay this is the main layout afterwards like I said this was the break that we were talking and this was the parts that we started to make the one additional probably important sound is his tommy plugs like I mentioned that I wanted to make it looks like this sounds like this similar to the horn sound that we made the difference here is I use pigments but this time it's a bit with sine waves and triangle waves so that's the reason that we are getting this like a tommy sound and again we have the envelope on the cutoff and a nice distortion and a little bit like a reverb and a bit delay It really contrasted the low end if I play it together. Really, really nice ambience. And the other thing that is important probably is I just wanted to have something filling in the ambient, the sound. Just play the same notes. This is really simple to be honest, this uh, wavetable together with a bit unison and a bit effects and then a snare of course that is added here with a lot of layers so we have this clap and this stretchy clap and the snare on top and saturation a bit of like a compression it's really rich uh, let's say progress fast clap and effects is just basically this uh, This is basically this one resampled with a long tail. So that this ding 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 sound together works nicely in the track. You will hear it pretty short and then a final right sounds like this. A right sound side change the snare and the kick itself. This is the right from PML. I think I use this one quite a bit. I enjoy this sound nicely. And a bit automation on our strings and so on. Okay, I think that's it. But let me play from the start to end, show you a little bit automation, show you a little bit notes, and then actually you can understand how these things that we created can work together. So let's do this. The one thing that I missed to mention is actually the shimmer reverb and shimmer reverbs basically means that super long reverbs and they're also uh, very high frequency let's say rich so that they really shimmer like they're really bright and 
the, the way I did it, basically putting a reverb, opening up everything, spinning it up a little bit around with the high frequencies, around like uh, one hertz, two hertz, whatever, and then doing a really long decay time. Then this is the key, I would say. And you can also play with the dance to make it even richer, but I felt like this was enough for this one. And all these ambience between the breaks are coming from the shimmer reverb. For example, I'm sending uh, here on the mix to the shimmer quite a bit. And then I'm also sending a couple of other things. Like I'm, I think I'm sending the pads as well. So sending different things into the shimmer so that it is, it gets like really high pitched ambient sound instead of just using white noise. I think this is a trick for this type of tracks. But other than that, this is the end of this super long video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learned something. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button and give it a like to the video. Other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.